Greetings and salutations. I'm back down the shed again. It's been a while since I've filmed any of these. I've been working my ass off trying to get this robot costume done. I can now reveal I was working on a Marvin the Paranoid Android for my friend's party. I am definitely going to be taking this to Supernova over in June. So that gives me just under two months to get this finished. And I've done so much work on this. So this is the part I've really wanted to show off so much this is the tv marvin head design this in 3d based off the references managed to get all this done and then the body failed i wanted to show you at least how far i'd gotten it doesn't have to be perfect to set on weathering it i didn't even get a chance to weather anything so that's where i'm coming in today i'm testing out a weathering technique that i saw on tested using oil i never weathered with oil but i really like the results especially because there's the um really kind of grimy oily type of results you can get with um using those paints but there's also a really cool weathering uh technique i've been wanting to try that was on punish props and that was about dry brushing silver and how to kind of get your brush to give you that kind of random pattern so i've got some oil paint right here there's um burnt umbra and ivory black these are going to be my oily dirt grime polishes and i've got some silver this is going to be using for the dry brush what i'm going to do is i've got both of my shoes down here one with the dry brush silver and the other i'm going to do with the dirty oil effect now, the reason why I'm not gonna do both finishes on one product at the same time, purely because I want to try and show the comparison between the two different finishes. Also, problem is of using oil-based paints, like enamels or these kind of uh, paint, is that they do tend to take a while to dry. Now, the great thing about acrylics is they dry quick. Problem with oils, it takes a lot longer to cure and to dry. The great thing about that is, of course, is you can fix things that are not working particularly well. For example, with the weathering, once that paint goes on, it can dry and can leave some marking, especially if you want to try and remove it, you'll have to typically remove it with water. It also depends if you want to layer on or take off particular finishes. Say, for example, if I start with a metal, edge wearing when i go back over that with the oils it might hide some of that detail and i might want to put some of that detail back on uh, conversely once i've done the oil based one and i put the silver finish on that actually might obscure some of the oil uh, and dirt now the other thing is there's two different ways to work this weathering with regards to what the effect i want with the silver i'm probably going to apply a dry brushing technique basically you want to get a very minimal amount of material onto your brush so you're just leaving essentially traces of it you're not adding a solid layer onto it you, the brush strokes are also very important to that as such i'm going to be using this brush here now it's a it's a synthetic brush, kind of got ruined with some other paints, so it's very like wild and bristly, but it's got some pretty hard pieces on there. There are some of these really soft pieces. So this is going to be nice for dry brushing because I'm probably going to be able to add some of that brush stroke detail, which will end up looking like uh, scrapes. So that's a brush I'm going to be using for dry brushing. I'm going to add a bit of uh, paint to a bit of paper and just kind of dab on it and brush it. Basically, I want to get the paint onto the brush but i don't want it to be covered i'm trying to add just the smallest amount of material because i'm using this type of paint it won't just dry up or anything like that so this should give me a good long cure time for working once i've painted on very thinly i just need to probably set it aside and maybe overnight it'll kind of come back and work it again so for a paint like this i'm probably going to use several different brushes depending on how much uh, detail i want to put on so i've got this big thick one here and i can just basically push a lot of material around and what i'm going to be doing is then dabbing it off with a bit of cloth what i'm trying to get is i want to get some of this you know material into the cracks or the the divots and stuff like that and then when i'm dabbing it off i want to keep a lot of that material inside those areas but i'm just taking off the outside material and also i don't want it to look like i'm just brushing it on so i don't want a solid line and i don't want brush strokes particularly so just dabbing that off will actually smudge it and if i need to add some more i reapply dab reapply dab reapply I'm using 
the same paint, but I'm using different brushes and different techniques to apply it. The overall effect with weathering is you want it to look used, but you don't want it to look artificial. You want to have that idea that this is just naturally occurring. For example, most of the grit and grime is probably going to be around this area, the area that if you imagine where most of the gunk is going to be trodden in on. So these areas might have some dirt in them. I will probably will just go over everything as I'm going, but these might be very light. There might be some oily splotches around this part because that's probably where oil's leaked out from everywhere else. And I'm hoping to try and replicate some drip on this, some drippy oil or something like that. And maybe some of the rust might be on here, but probably not gonna be too much here. Whereas the metal scraping is probably going to be very more evident along here where, you know, his, you know, his toes have scraped up against something, maybe on the highlighted ends on here, the areas where that looks like he's probably bumped up against something. So, oh, it's just scraped by. So probably not going to have a lot, a lot of brush strokes on the bottom here, but very much on these top ends are probably where a lot of that's going to be very heavy. Now, the other cool thing about using weathering is places where the paint hasn't quite set because I, I was rush jobbing these. I didn't properly seal a lot of the stuff. I just I just went to it. That's actually going to help. Not necessarily mask it, but it's going to have the idea that, you know, maybe these blemishes aren't blemishes. They're just what's happened over time. And yes, I could use that to excuse my laziness, but I was also going for the weathered aesthetic anyway. And hence why there's all these scratches and all that that have been pre-baked in. The dirt's also going to help really emphasize those. Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of wear and tear on this robot. So let's get to it.
So as you can see, I'm gonna be careful trying not to touch these as they're still technically wet. Two very distinct different types of weathering for different effects. Now, of course, the fun bit is I'm gonna to have to, you know, combine these together at some point. So we'll go over the silver dry brush method first. Now, I don't think the brush I was using was that particularly good. And the problem is, of course, the lights is going to be played a major issue because I'm going to shed. There's a lot of shade. I could put the overhead lights on, but realistically speaking, I know what I'm doing when I'm hitting those edges. See, there's bits here. I, this is still so wet that I can remove some of this. Now, I don't particularly want to do too much because I said I'm going to do a different pass. I think I'd laid it on a little bit too heavy, so I'm just taking a little bit of that off. And I can always apply a bit more later. I might use a smaller brush. That's taken off some of those hard splotches. The thing I've noticed is that it's having an effect with the paint, got the uh, graphite rubbed on. I'm not overly bothered with that. I mean, I think it actually adds to the weathering and you can probably see it here. The, that splotch there is the original paint, but where these oil paint is interacted with, it's kind of added a bit of a, it almost looks like a bit of a, um, like a heat burn effect. So I'm not overly fussed on trying to fix that i'm also not overly fussed on spiders crawling on my hand it's been outside for a couple of weeks so i've actually hit it with some surface spray and because i know some webs on here so i'm gonna have to do that again before i wear them what i'll probably do is i'll take a photo outside superimpose it over here and where in sunlight you'll see how this when this graphite darkens down because it's a very matted surface this paint should actually be uh, a bit more glossier that'll actually add to that contrast kind of like how i did with the mechleth it was a graphite rub and i was just using this silver paint here you could do the dry rubbing with this but i liked the control i was getting in the tube again that dries a lot quicker than this as you can see, this was worked on, I don't know, half an hour or so ago. I mean, some of it is drying, but I'm able to still wipe some of this bit off. So let's move on to the dirt. Now, this one is a lot more visible, and it's also because I've got a lot more paint on here. Now, I'm actually, I can, again, push some of this paint back off. I can just go with a towel. Now, what this also does is that I'm removing some of the volume off it while it's already dry. So the, the stuff that's already gripped in is still gonna be there, but I'm just wiping off the surface, especially where I'm probably gonna be adding a more of that silver paint, but I'm not trying to get rid of it. I'm just trying to soften it, I suppose is the best way to describe it, but it's still in there. That's the beauty of this technique. I'm rubbing it in a direction which I'm thinking will, the dirt and everything will rub off. So, you know, I'm doing it like that because that's probably how you're gonna polish it to a certain degree. But I'm also rubbing it like that because I wanna get those edges a bit more highlighted. Now, once I put the silver paint on there, that'll end up making that more pronounced. And then I can always hit it back with a bit of the brown. On the whole, I'm really happy about that. It's a messy job. Weathering is always gonna be messy. And because this is oils, I've been using terps to clean my brushes out. One tip, because I sometimes use a jar for water and I'll use a jar for terps. I mean, even though they're two different jars, I still write terps and stuff on there. I mean, this one's worn off. For, it's always good to, even especially if you've got the, the lids. So just write your terps on there. And when I say terps, of course, I'm referring to mineral turpentine. That way, A, you can match your, your jar to your lid, but also you're not gonna be sticking all base paint into the water and wondering why it's not working or vice versa. But of course, the more you use it, the more clunky and gunky it's gonna get to the point where you're just gonna have to dispose of it. Okay, so it's the next day and I've basically done the opposite to each shoe. I've added a bit more oily gunk as well, now that I can you know, thin it down properly. So I'll show you the first one, which was metal brush finish, and I've added the dirt on. Now, the biggest problem is that even though this was pretty cured, um, rubbing down the dirt actually took off so much of that metal finish that it's gonna have to be reapplied anyway. Now, because this is gonna be the bottom of the robot, I really wanted to emphasize that all that oil is dragged down below everything. This is why this is probably gonna be the most dirtiest of the lot. And I'm still yet to add some rust. What I'm probably gonna do in future is I'm gonna start with a dirt layer 
then I'm going to add the highlight layer and then I'm probably going to mix between the two depending on how things happen. Because I do want to have some of this dirt layered on top of the highlights and I want some of the highlights to be layered on top of the dirt. For comparison, this is the boot that originally had the first dirt layer and I've added the uh, highlights on top of that. I've also done the oil finish at the same time. So here you can see that the shiny bits as kind of overlaid onto the dirt I want to have something that has a bit of depth and layer so you know it's not just really clean it's not just one thing on top of the other it's multiple layers I probably went a little bit heavier handed I will admit on this one as I wasn't particularly happy with the original one I made sure I really heavily add a lot more and visually now you can see it is a lot more worn torn now I definitely want to add some dirt onto this so I actually want to really redo some of these cracks and stuff like that you know even if it's just a smaller brush and i just paint it in there a bit more and that's where i want to add probably some of my rust is in these crevices these now really pop i might add some bit more go a bit over these with a bit more brown just on these edges really try and add a bit more dirt onto them but for the most part i'm really loving how that's turned out as a side by side comparison you can kind of see just how much that really makes that pop compared to that. I mean, if you want to add the subtlety of this, then sure, by all means. But I like that. I really, really like that. That looks like it's gone through some stuff. Now, I'm probably not going to be as heavy handed on some of the other parts. This also has a lot of angles to really work with and it can really shine. They make these look really, really interesting. This tells you just how much crap this robot's gone through which is the point i'm really liking that i also really like how add some dirt and then brushing over these little bits has helped make them pop as well and so you got all this dirt and crush in there but the the silver it helps make it look like you know it's it's just gone through so much hell that's going to be left overnight to dry and i'm probably gonna go back over this with some silver and probably add a bit more dirt onto here. I'm probably gonna build up the dirt again on this one as well. I've still gotta finish up my thigh pieces and I've still gotta work on the body. That's the biggest logistical issue is the body. I am very much tempted to scrap it and rebuild it at this point. I'll see how I feel. Basically, I'm probably gonna be at this point where I'm contemplating scrapping the arms and the body and rejigging the claws and rebuilding stuff or fingering a way to melt it all together. Uh, I've still got a couple of months, but realistically speaking, that's kind of feels like the bugbear at the moment. And I, I am, I'm almost really, really over it. Uh, I really just want to get it done and over with. So who knows, we'll see. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, share, and subscribe, all that other usual gaff. If you wanna know more about this particular type of build or this particular type of weathering or things I've done, please comment below, let me know. If you've got any hints, tips, or tricks, please comment and let me know. But until next time, share and enjoy. See ya.